Oh, it's just the river moving the boat. Oh. Wow, will you look at them? Oh. They're dead, ain't they? Sure are. What are we gonna do? We gotta tell somebody. Marshall's out of town. And Doc Streeter, he's gone over to the Angus place and he won't be back. Well, maybe we ought to go over and see old Doc Eckert. My father stripped me alive if he caught me talking to him. Those men, they must have been terrible sick when they before they died. Well, we gotta tell someone, and the only one left in town is Doc Eckert. All right, all right. Mrs. Foster, come in, come in. My goodness, you shouldn't be out in the rain. Oh, little rain never hurt a body or a soul either, Dr. Eckhart. <laughs> Had a little boiled dinner left over and couldn't see it wasted. Every day you have a little something left over. <laughs> I'm getting fat on your leftovers. And uh, how can I repay you? You are such a healthy woman. You be quiet and just eat while it's hot, or I'll have to be slopping the pigs with it. You're a very good woman, Mrs. Foster. Nonsense. Uh, nobody sick today? No, nothing today. Well, if I live to be 110, I'll never understand why people go to that Fred Streeter with you in town. Why, you're a doctor. You were educated in Europe. That Fred Streeter, he's nothing more than a horse doctor. Oh, no. You are wrong, Mrs. Foster. Dr. Streeter is very capable. It's not his fault if the town is not large enough to support two doctors. Especially when one is an odd little German whose first patient died of a malady there was no cure for. Well, it just turns me cold to think that a man with so much love in his heart going to waste. You could be helping people if they'd only let you. Yeah. That would be nice. Then I could pay you for my own. Oh, I ain't hurting for it. I got a little something put away in my corset. <laughs> Now, the doctor's having his supper. Well, what, uh, what is it that you want, boys? Well, me and Jamie, we were fishing down at the river, and there's a riverboat on the sandbar, but you can wait out to it. Now, please speak slower. Well, it's run aground. The riverboat? Yeah, and we went aboard. There's dead people in it, and they look awful. They look worse than a dead horse or my grandpa or anything. How many? Oh, I reckon there's around six or seven. And they was awful looking. There's all, there's all black and bumpy and everything. You must take me there at once.
boy, would you look at that. I wonder how it got started. Aren't there supposed to be dead men aboard that boat? I'm glad you could come, Dr. Streeter. Blast it all, Eckhart. What goes on here? What about the men aboard that boat? Boys, please. Go and stand under that tree for a little while. I want to talk to Dr. Streeter. Oh, we found the boat first. Please, hurry. Go now. Yes, Doctor. There were dead men aboard that boat. Seven in all. And that boat is burning because I set fire to it. Are you out of your mind? Seven men died. And you don't even wait for the marshal. The marshal could not be found. And I could not wait. I assure you, Doctor, you would have done exactly the same thing in my place. I hardly think so. Doctor, we are dealing with bubonic plague. Bubonic plague? Is this another one of your fancy European theories? I wish it were not true. With all my heart. I have lived through the plague in my motherland of Germany. I have seen half of our town carried off in the death cart. Piles with the dead bodies of children that I used to play with. Oh, come now, Dr. Eckert. You know there has never been a single case of the plague in the United States. I've never seen one, not one. You very conveniently burned that boat, so I don't know what killed those men. But I had to, to keep the diseased rats from coming ashore. Oh, now it's rats, is it? You have a theory for everything, don't you? What was it you said Alice Jameson died of? Malignant tumors of the lymph glands. Ah, yes. You gave it a name, then left her to die. But the malignancy had spread too far. There was nothing that could be done. If I had been in town, that woman would have been alive today. Yes. But you were in town two weeks before, when you examined her and said she was in perfect health. Now it's bubonic plague. The marshal will be very interested to know why you burn private property. The new medical treatment. Boat burning. Eckhart's cure-all. All right, doctor. You may tell the marshal anything that pleases you. It's true. I burned that boat. Yes, I did. But I called you here because I must hurry to Cimarron City. That boat stopped there and I must warn them. Maybe they'll be so grateful to you they'll ask you to set up practice there. But you won't get away with anything there either. Doc Hodges will see to that. Doctor, those two boys have been exposed to the plague. You must keep them on the constant observation. I hope they won't get it. They were only on board for a moment. But they must be watched. And if they contract a disease, you must isolate them. And if you don't know the plague when you see it, there is a book in my room which has pictures. darkness. I hate the specters that lurk in it. They will never speak. They will only stare and stare and stare. Dying rats. Telegraph this morning. He's going to be up in Tulsa another couple of weeks. Said the railroad discussion taking longer than expected. Be home two more weeks. Should have known it. I'll bet he's having himself a dandy time up there at nights. Me sitting here in Cimarron City in this blasted rain. Hi, hey, Doc. Howdy, Doc. Morning. Cup of coffee? Saved you a cup. Oh, good thing you did. I could sure use it. I've been on the go since early this morning. I need it. I swear, everybody in this town has either got the vapors or the croup. To top it all off, thank you, Ed Fitzgerald had to go and trip over a wagon tongue and break his leg. <laughs> Took darn near a pint of whiskey before I could get him settled enough so I could set the leg for him. <laughs> Gonna think he has a broken head too when he wakes up tomorrow morning. <laughs> well, next month it'll be babies, babies, babies. How do you know that, Doc? I can time it from the first good snow of the year.
you reckon who that could be? I don't know nobody in Cimarron City at Knox first. Well, come on in! I... I was told that Dr. Hodges stops here in the evening. Huh? Oh, I'm Dr. Hodges. What can I do for you? Oh, I was afraid that you would be out making your calls. I am Dr. Hans Eckhart from Elk River. I've heard of you. It is most important that I speak to you. Go right ahead. A riverboat went aground, and when I investigated, I found there were seven dead men aboard that boat. What killed them? Bubonic plague. What? Yes, I am sorry to say it is true. The plague? Yes, good doctor. That is why I have come here to Cimarron City. We must take precautions to save your town. You are all in great danger. Excuse me, but I never heard of this boo bouphonic flag. It is a terrible pestilence that comes from the Middle East and China. And in the days of Rome, it killed as many as 10,000 people in a day. Why, there's more people than in Cimarron City. Well, how does a boat in Elk River affect our town, Doctor? Because, you see, that boat, the Duchess of New Orleans, stopped here first. Hey, that's right. Well, but how can we be in danger? That boat left here weeks ago. Oh, but you see, the sickness was on board the boat, and some of it came ashore here. How? The ship rats. They come ashore and give their terrible pestilence to man. You mean a, a rat can make a man die? A little rat? Oh, yes, if the rat carries the disease. Well, how do you know? You ask him. No, no, you see, the rat becomes sick, too. You said this disease comes from the other side of the world. How in blazes did it get up here? Ah, because the rat is a world traveler. He rides everywhere in the holds of the ships, going ashore when the ship docks. And then sometimes he goes on board of other boats, like, uh, like the Duchess of New Orleans. Dr. Eckhart, I've never heard of anyone dying of rat bite. Except a very small infant, maybe. We haven't had anything more serious around here lately than the croup and a broken leg. No, I beg your pardon, doctor, but the disease is not transmitted by rat bite. Well, then perhaps you could explain to me how the rat spreads the disease to man if he doesn't bite him. I do not know yet, for sure. Then how can you expect us to believe all this nonsense about the rats? Sure, they come into town when it rains. It happens every spring. But in all the years that I've been practicing, I've never heard of one single case of the plague. I know that no case has ever been reported, but you must believe me. If this is true, Doctor, what can we do about it? Ah, then we must organize the men to hunt for the rats. Poison them, trap them, shoot them. Anything to destroy them. And then we must burn their bodies. If we act now, we can stop this thing before it strikes. But if we don't do something, everyone in Cimarron City can be dead within two weeks after the first case. That's a pretty serious proposal. What do you think, Doc? Maybe we ought to go along with him, Doc. I never did like them little beggars nowhere. No, sir. Not while I'm doctor in this town. In the first place, I don't believe his fancy theories about the rats. Nobody knows how plague spreads. Nobody. Never been in any medical book that I've ever read. And secondly, I couldn't allow a rat hunt like that to take place in this town. There'd be panic inside of five minutes. And thirdly, I doubt your reputation as a doctor, sir. Now, maybe you did see dead men on that boat, but I'll stake my reputation that they didn't die of plague. No, sir, not here in Oklahoma or in any other part of this country, because there is no plague. Cotton Himmel, man! For your town, for your mothers, your babies. <laughs> Mr. Sheriff, there is no time. No time. We must act now to save your town. Then I'll have to put it another way, more bluntly, I'm afraid. Lane, I know this man's reputation from Elk River. Ask Dr. Streeter. He's always advancing strange European theories that we've never even heard of in this country. His record in Elk City is not good. Now, I don't see how we can be expected to take his word that something that's never happened in this country before is going to happen here now for the very first time. I'm sorry I had to speak that way, but you've got to realize my responsibility to the people of Cimarron City. I'm sorry, Dr. Eckhart. 
Doc Hodges here has seen us through thick and thin for 10 years now. He's fixed us when we were sick and brought more babies into the world than I can count. We're gonna have to go along with him. You understand, we know him. We don't know you. I understand your position. But you must also understand mine. As a doctor, I have a responsibility to humanity, whatever town they live in. If you will not help your people, I will. No man should die because of ignorance. Dr. Eckhart didn't leave Cimarron City. Instead, he had taken a room over the saloon. He spent all the daylight hours walking up and down the streets of our town, sometimes asking questions, sometimes just looking. It's the nature of a small town to be suspicious of a stranger, especially when that stranger asks mighty peculiar questions. Rats. Thunderation, man. What kind of a question is that? Of course we get them when it rains. It happens every year. Well, behind you, I don't know what you're talking about. But you have not found any dead ones, you know? Sure. Every now and then, one of the little critters kicks off, just like the rest of us. Yes, but not today. You have not found any today, uh, not this week, no? Hey, is something wrong with you, mister? I never heard a man talk the way you do. What difference does it make we have a whole hayloft full of dead rats? What's it to you? Oh, then you must tell Mr. Sheriff. You must run and tell Mr. Sheriff. But if this don't tie the cow's tail in the knot, why at some duration should I go tell the sheriff? That I, I cannot explain. But when it happens, you must do it. It is most important. Uh, thank you both very much for your time. I must go now. Asking about rats? Doc? Is he local or something? If you'd ask me, I'd say he even looks like a rat. A little old critter running all over town, twitching his whiskers. Yes, sir. That's what he is, all right. A rat man. <laughs> a rat man. <laughs> I tell you, Lane, I don't like him here in town. He's bound to stir up trouble. Now, I walked through town coming over here and listened to what the people were saying. And they're afraid. They think something terrible is going to happen. Why, it's like a man standing with a lighted cigarette in a room full of gunpowder. Just one little spark. A little boy gets the measles. An old man dies a natural death. And that'll be the start of a real panic. You know, I was in Elwood once when the local barber took sick. Somebody yelled cholera and everybody jumped in the wagons and left town. While they were gone, the whole town burned right to the ground. Somebody forgot to put out a fire. The barber, last I heard, was still living. You've got to put a stop to it, Lane, for the good of Cimarron City. Yeah. I wired Dr. Streeter. And you were right about Eckhart's reputation. Of course I'm right. Nate Pinker, what are you doing out in the rain? Maud's time's come, Doc. You've got to come to the house. Well, Maud's not due till next month. Is she having pains yet? She hurts all the time. It isn't like it was with the other baby. I think something's wrong. Now, Nate, don't you go thinking something terrible is going to happen. I brought your little girl Ellie into the world easy as falling out of bed. Nothing's going to happen this time, either. Mr. Temple. Now, what have you been doing? Fighting again? No, sir, Mr. Temple. Honest, I ain't. I was over at saloon, all right, but I was helping old Frank stack a big batch of bottles, and one of them busted and sort of cut my hand. Oh, bad, Tiny? Well, took three whole stitches in it, but Dr. Eckhart says it's going to be all right. Doc Eckhart? Yes, sir. You see, he was just coming down out of his room when it happened. He said he'd fix it. And I'll tell you, it really didn't hurt none at all. It's over that quick. Tell you something else, too. He's just as easy as an old mama cow is with a calf. Mr. Temple, you and me both heard Doc Hodges say that, that little German feller wasn't very good. Well, now, I just don't know about that. Coming. Oh, Mr. Sheriff, uh, I'm honored uh, by your visit. Come in, come in. Uh, 
Uh, please, uh, sit down. Hmm? No, thank you, Doctor. I, I've been sitting all day. Well, but you... Uh, you will have a piece of cheese with me, huh? No, thank you. Ah, well, I will have a piece myself, huh? You know, when I was a, a student in Germany, a medical student, we used to practice our sewing all the time. Sometimes we would sew up a friend's pants leg when he was asleep. <laughs> we made a joke, but it made us very fast. Our instructor, Dr. Weinstein, always used to say, if God intended the light to shine inside a person, he would have left him open. So be very quick. <laughs> I'm laughing because I do not know how to sew up a coat. It is a very funny stitch. All right. You want to tell me something? And I am not letting you. Well, yes. You want to tell me that I am a dangerous old man and I am making trouble for your town, hmm? Well, hang it, old man. You just can't go around and scare a whole town like this. Well, I... I have told no one that the rats mean plague. I know you haven't, Doctor. But there's another sickness. Fear. Fear of the unknown. Well, I am sorry if I have made your people afraid, but... I, I could not get on my horse and ride away, knowing what I know. Your Dr. Hodges is a good man, but here in the West, he does not know what has been done in medicine. In Europe, everyone is talking about, about Lister, Simpson, Jena, and Dr. Pasteur. There is a new kind of medicine. The medicine we practice so that disease does not strike. Preventive medicine. I... I am sorry that I have made your town afraid, but if, if one life is saved by it, that fear will be a small price to pay. Believe me, Mr. Sheriff, I will take no satisfaction if the plague does strike. It will be a terrible reward for being right. Well, Doctor, there's a little empty shack out by the hollow. You can stay there until we know something for sure. Right or wrong, you just can't stay here in town anymore. All right. Whatever you say, Mr. Sheriff. Perhaps it is better this way. I don't have any more money to pay for my own, anyway. Hi, Doc. How you doing? I'm well, thank you. What's on your mind, Finnegan? Old Doc here's been looking all over town for something. Ain't nobody in Simran City got a heart except Bud Finnegan. Here, Doc, I brought you a present. Couldn't find one what was dead, so I went out and shot you one. You and a piece of newspaper. I'm sorry you had to do that for me, Mr. Sheriff. I didn't. I did it for myself. You take a cross out of the hand of a dying man. Close up, man. I'll go home and get warm. I swear this dampness never gets out of my bones. Don't worry, I'll lock everything. Well, good night. See you in the morning. Good night. Yeah, crash. Sheriff! Sheriff! What's eating you, Ben? There's a brief. 
stables full of rats. Dead ones. Go out and get Doc Hodges. He's out at the clinker place. Yeah. I'll get Doc Eckhart. Terrible. Head hurts. It's terrible pain. They're hurting me. Oh, light's so bright, it hurts. Oh, my head. Nate! Nate! It's a boy! I, I, I didn't hear the baby, Doc. I didn't hear the little fella cry. Baby's sleeping, huh, Doc? It's a boy, isn't it? Nate, the good Lord didn't see fit to breathe life into your son. He was stillborn. I did everything I could. Man's, man's got to have sons. Man can't live without sons to carry his name. Maud. What about Maud? She's asleep now. But she's going to be all right, huh? She has a fever, but I think she's going to be all right. Doc! Doc Hodges! Doc, we got to see you! What are you men doing here? And stop making all this noise. My livery stable is full of dead rats. What? I counted at least ten of them. Well, now, hold on a minute. Me and Dodie here seen them ourselves, Doc. We sure did. You people are acting like a bunch of skittish old women. You've all been out in the prairie before and seen dead animals, squirrels and woodchucks. Just because you found a few dead rats, that doesn't mean there's a plague in similar... Plague? Doc! Doc, come quick! Both of us breathe them! people doing in here? Have you no respect for Nate's feeling? There's been a death in this family. Come on, outside, all of you. Let's go. Uh, that's enough for me, boys. There's plague in Cimarron City. We gotta get everybody out of here. Now listen, don't panic. Go to your homes and stay there. What's going on here? Oh, Maud died of fever and they think it's a plague. Well, you've done what you came here for, Dr. Reckhart. You started a panic. They found rats in the livery stable. So they told me, but that doesn't mean plague. He had so little time. I understand your feelings about me, Dr. Hodges, but we must act. Will you believe me if I can describe the symptoms of that poor woman in there? Let him, Doc. Go ahead, talk. All right. Shivering at first. A rise in temperature. Severe headache. Sensitive to light. Delirium treatment. Eyes red, inflamed. Darkening of the skin and bubbles around the axilla submaxillary. Do not blame yourself. You did not know. And Dr. Dr. Streeter in Elk River did not know. Do not persecute yourself. It's a time we've wasted. Well, maybe it is not too late if we act now. All right. What's the first thing we do? We must isolate the town. Keep the people apart. We must hunt for the rats and burn them. And if anyone dies of the plague, we must burn the body. I'm scared from down in my boots. Yeah, ain't there something we can do to protect ourselves? I heard once that garlic could keep the vapors away. Well, a little garlic certainly couldn't hurt. Could it, Doctor? No, it certainly couldn't. see that dreaded sign again. Many years ago, it was on my house too.
sure is quiet, ain't it? Wouldn't be no sound at all if it wasn't for the rain. Gives you a funny feeling like there ain't nobody in town, don't you? Maybe there isn't. Taking us to get back from the Pinker place. The town's been evacuated. But you must get them back and into their homes. Those who have the plague will give it to the others. We must make them come back, or we will not be able to control the spread of the disease. Well, it's going to be a hard thing to do. They're not going to want to come back now, that's for sure. It's not going to be easy to force them either. Tiny, right out to Matt's ranch. Get all the men you can find. I'm going to need help. Yes, sir. Cody, stay here with the doctors. Do what they tell you. You sure I hadn't thought to go along with you, Mr. Temple? No, you'll be more help here. Well, I guess I'd better hurry before the rain washes out their tracks. Don't tell them where they're liable to go. Let's go over to the sheriff's office. We can figure out what to do from there, doctor. Thank you. Come on, you guys, get that rolling. Hey, buddy, how about giving us a hand with this thing? Oh, uh, you guys got no muscle? How much your figures in here? Oh, about thirty, forty thousand dollars. Let old Temple explain this come election time. <laughs> I'm so smart, I sometimes surprise myself. Let's get out of here. This place gives me the willies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, about thirty thousand dollars worth of willies. Yes, sir. About thirty thousand dollars worth. Listen. Hold your wagon. Get out of the way, Lane. Now listen to me. You've got to turn around and go back. There's plague in Cimarron City. You can't ask us to go back. It's death for sure. We've only had one case so far. We've got to go back so we can control the disease. That's crazy talk. If we go back, we'll all get it. More of you are going to die out here just from the weather. You've got no food, no shelter, no place to keep your kids warm. Back in Cimarron, we've got doctors, two good ones, and people to take care of you. You mean people to haul us away in a sheet? Yeah, that's right. Now, wait a minute. You'll be safer in your own homes. Some of you may already be infected with the plague. You may give it to the others. Look here, Lane. I'm not going back in that pest hole. There's nothing you can do to make me. Lane, is this what Doc Hodges says we should do? Yes. He's trying to help you. And so is Dr. Eckhart. I ain't doing anything that crackpot says. And do you think I'd go back if I thought it was certain death? I want to live just as much as the rest of you. Believe me, going back is for your own good. I'm not going to lie to you. We've got a terrible disease on our hands. But if you don't go back, this time next week there won't be a Cimarron City. And there won't be enough of you left to bury each other. All right, you go back into that pest hole. And if you don't die next week, I'll come back then. Doc Hodges says so. I'll go back. Well, I'm getting out of here. I'll suit the first man that moves. Now turn those wagons around. I'm declaring martial law. We'll hang you for this, Lane. Maybe you will. But you'll do it in Cimarron City. Now turn around. You can't stop us. You're only one man. All right, Cecil. Turn that wagon around.
You feeling all right, Mr. Temple? No, Tiny, I'm sick. Right here. For them. They're all fine people. But they've got to go back. To God only knows what. Ah, you have found the coal oil. Now, uh, now we must find a place to build a large fire. Well, there's a shack around the side of the building that's open on three sides. Good. Here they come. Mr. Temple made them come back. How my heart aches for them. They must be so afraid. Dr. Eckhart here will tell you the best way to protect yourselves. The first thing you must do is to build big fires and get warm. Then go into your houses and take all the food from the cupboards and put it in tins. If you don't have tins, tie it in sacks and hang it from the ceiling. Leave the lamps burning all night and in every room take access and knock holes in the bottom of the wall. Now, if you see a rat, you know what you must do. But don't pick it up with your hands. Sweep it out the front door, and we will send men to collect them and to burn them. If you don't mind, I'd rather take orders from Doc Hodges. Now, hold on, hold on. I'm as much to blame as anyone that we didn't listen to Dr. Eckhart in the first place. Now, I'm telling you to do exactly what he says. And there's a chance we may stop this plague before it begins. How many before it ends? We will fight very hard. But we will lose some. The smell of you is going to be the end of me. Yeah, well, I ain't got it yet. Won't you eat? I lost my appetite a couple of days ago. How's it going? Well, with, with the two new cases we have today, that makes a total of... Uh, of uh, Eight sick and three dead here in town. I'm not counting the pinkers. Yeah, well... I, I have been making a map here, and now we can chart the progress of the epidemic. All the cases we've had so far have been either here or, or here. That's near uh, Fayette's stable and uh, the general store. How is, uh, is uh, Mr. Perry? Did you check on him? Well, he's holding his own. Good. Well, I think now we are ready for the final step. I had hoped we could avoid it, but the epidemic is becoming very severe. What else can we do? Well, we must isolate all the sick ones in one building and then burn all their homes. In that manner, it is possible that 
They may put an end to the epidemic this very day. Good heavens, man, have you caught it? Yes, I, I am afraid so. I've, I've felt it coming on all day. I think it is best if I go to bed in, in the saloon with the others. Hmm? Fanny, Dodie, organize the men. Start burning those houses. Yes, sir. All right. Hey, look at that, Dodie, a loose fire. It's that Bud Finnegan feller. Help me. Somebody please help me. You look pretty sick. I ain't sick. It's too much lousy whiskey, that's all. I ain't sick. I ain't got it. I wouldn't have wished that kind of a death even on him. Boys, take that safe back to the Cattlemen's Association. And when you fire those houses, include this wagon. Yes, sir. All right. Mr. Sheriff, how are you? I, I'm fine. Did you set fire to all the buildings, Lane? Yeah. If there are no new cases in 48 hours, I think we will have won the battle. Dr. Eckhart, as soon as you get back on your feet and we get Cimarron City back to health, We'd sure like to see you settle here permanently. I could sure use another man. <laughs> I would like that. Simon City is a good town. We treated you pretty badly. I was the worst. No, no, no. Everybody has been very good to me. What more can a doctor want than to be needed by people? Just don't seem fair. You helping everybody the way you did, and then you getting it. For a thousand years, we struggle with our own ignorance. And everything we learn is hard won by pain and death. I, I wanted to buy a microscope to see how the disease is transmitted. But I didn't have the money. It is funny. I think I know now. When that unfortunate man gave me that dead rat in the package, he gave me the answer. The rat had a little flea that jumped out on my arm. I remembered it later. That is how the disease is transmitted. A, a little flea that bites rat and man. Dr. Hodges, you must convince the others of this. I'll try, Doctor. I am very happy. Because now this terrible epidemic need not happen again. Yeah. In Germany, the mothers used to die after having their children because the doctors didn't believe there was such a thing as a little bug that could get on their hands and infect all the mothers they touched. Childhood fever. The mothers 
were afraid to go to the hospital. And some of them would have their babies in the streets because the little bugs in the gutter weren't as bad as the ones in the hospital. But Semmelweis showed them the truth. What did he do? He showed the doctors how to wash their hands and to keep the sick mothers away from the well ones. And now the women are not afraid to go to the hospital to have their babies. <laughs> Simple, no? Doctor, you're tiring yourself. You'd better rest now. No. No, please. Soon I will rest for a million years. Let an old man talk. Maybe one day we will find a new kind of soap to wash the fleas away from the rats. <laughs> I have not had enough years in this life. I have not discovered enough to help my people. You've done much more than was ever asked of you, Doctor. Maybe. To light one candle in the darkness is enough for one man, but... I wanted to do more. So much more. And I call myself doctor. Out of 13 people struck by the plague, 12 are in this little cemetery. Silas Perry was the only one who had recovered. The buildings are all rebuilt now, but we still talk about it from time to time. As a matter of fact, Dr. Hodges showed me a paper he got from Boston that said a Dr. Yerson in China had proved the flea was the carrier of the disease. Dr. Hodges and I like to come up here from time to time. We talk about our town and how to make it better. It's quiet here, and we like the company. Mm -hmm.